All right. Thank you. Uh, that was done right on time. And this is the last session. Um, they say, keep the best for the last. <laughs> it starts with the keynote and ends with another keynote. So hopefully, I do a good job. Um, are you all ready up for the last 20 minutes? Right. Um, just to introduce uh, myself, uh, I'm Uma Mukara. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called MyData. I work out of Bangalore. Uh, we are headquartered in Silicon Valley. Uh, we are uh, a cloud native uh, data management company, predominantly working on stateful applications on Kubernetes. And we use GitLab heavily. When I say we, there are two parts to it. Uh, one is as a company, uh, we do GitLab uh, internally for CI and CD as well. And then we have a huge um, open source community around OpenEBS. Uh, and then we see a lot of GitLab coming in there. Right? So today, uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, how we are using GitLab, as well as uh, how our community is using GitLab, what are the common use cases around it. Right? Um, so let's quickly talk uh, for a minute about uh, what these two fantastic open source projects that are part of CNCF Kubernetes ecosystem are. Uh, the first one is Open EBS. Uh, it's really open source equivalent of uh, elastic block storage. Uh, it's a container attached storage for stateful applications such as GitLab uh, on Kubernetes, right? Uh, you must have heard about um, NAS and DAS, but CAS is something that uh, we defined as a new category in storage. Uh, it's container attached storage. Uh, you know, Kubernetes is all about dealing with um, you know, portability of applications from anywhere to anywhere, right? So that's why stateless applications are so good. And then when it comes to data, uh, the stateful applications, there is a stickiness, right? And then container attached storage is about putting that storage software into a container and then you know, treat it like a container so that there is no portability problem, right? Um, it's a cloud native uh, sandbox project on CNCF. Um, the other one that uh, we're sponsoring, which is still with us, and we're hoping that it'll uh, go to uh, same path as Sandbox is uh, Litmus. Um, it's a Kubernetes native chaos engineering project uh, for both developers as well as SREs managing the operations. Um, so what are we going to talk about? I think I just touched upon uh, a little bit, right? So how do we use uh, um, GitLab at MyData? Uh, as CEO, uh, I manage operations uh, in our company, you know, we are a startup. Uh, operations really means the software operations as well, right? So how are we using um, GitLab, right? I mean, like, we did try uh, Jenkins to begin with, uh, but this concept of CI and CD together was really m the one thing that uh, made me decide, let's go with uh, GitLab, right? Um, so what we did is uh, we actually liked how CNCF is doing the CI platform. I don't know how many of you are aware of CNCF.ci. It's a CI platform for all the graduated projects uh, within the CNCF ecosystem. So we took some kind of an inspiration from that and then uh, created a front end to our entire CS CI platform at uh, its open. Um, uh, what I meant by open CI platform is uh, the scripts and the way we built all our pipelines is also open source, right? And um, as you can see that it's, it's powered by GitLab and uh, all, uh, it's about also transparency, right? So, you know, your, your users should really believe in how you're testing your uh, um, code, right? And um, as you can see, you know, like there are um, each commit goes through various tests uh, before it actually gets uh, uh, merged into the mainstream. And uh, there is something different about um, the last stage. Uh, it's about chaos testing, right? And uh, I think um, someone, Roger from Siemens, that was a fantastic talk towards the end. He touched upon reliability, right? 
Kubernetes is really uh, coming in because the way you do DevOps is much easier, much more effective, but it is about reliability. So how do you actually make sure that this open EBS project or whatever you deploy in your Kubernetes cluster is really um, reliable, right? So unless you do chaos testing, and make sure that all failure scenarios are covered, uh, you cannot say that it's it's reliable. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, you know how anyone can do chaos testing uh, using uh, Litmus and GitLab in a bit, but that's how we're using at my data. And then that's that's one use case. The other one is GitLab itself. You know we are running on prem, right? And um, we're not using the GitLab cloud. Uh, one reason is there are many users who are trying to deploy. GitLab on Kubernetes, their own cloud account, or their own, uh, for example, on OpenShift um, or other uh, private cloud platforms, uh, we see a lot of them are using OpenEBS as the shared storage for various applications that are uh, that are there. These are all stateful applications, so um, there needs to be a good storage on your private cloud for your GitLab instances. So we see a lot of that, um, GitLab being used for it. So what we thought was, why don't we actually deploy that for ourselves so that we dog food uh, open EBS for GitLab, right? So this is how we're using uh, GitLab. So you, what you see, openebs.ci, it's really coming from, uh, it's a CI platform for open EBS running on open EBS itself, right? So. Just imagine uh, you, you get in a wrong check-in, and then your CA platform itself will go down, right? So that's uh, that's the bet that we are taking uh, to make sure that the code is uh, maintained at a good quality level. Well, that's that's how uh, we are using my team, and then how is uh, our community, Open EBS community, using GitLab, right? Uh, we see, as I said, a lot of them are using uh, Open EBS and GitLab for on-prem as a combination on Kubernetes. That's good. And the most interesting thing is they're solving uh, a good challenge that is typically fa uh, faced by um, developers and SREs together uh, in the cloud native ecosystem world. It's also called data DevOps, but also it's, you know, some people term it as cloud native CI CD for stateful applications, right? So uh, let me talk this probably the topic that uh, attains more uh, interest uh, in general. So what are uh, the main challenges in cloud native CI/CD? Of course, GitLab itself has converted the application into a Helm chart that runs very well on uh, Kubernetes, so you can just use it, uh, deploy it in a few minutes. All you need to do is just the change the storage class to open EBS, and then everything is done, right? So that's great. But there are a couple of other challenges that you typically face. The first one is, you know, it's about data, right? your CI pipeline has to run on the latest data that's closer to the production. So how do you make sure that the data is closer to your pre-production, right? And the second one is, you know, it's about agility, developer agility. So I merge my code while CI actually tests, and then, you know, it all tested, the pipeline ran within 30 minutes or one hour, and then it failed. I merge caused a problem. Now I want to debug. Right, so that's how do I get the exact state of data at the instance of failure, so that you know I can just go and you know debug and then uh, fix that problem. So these two are something that uh, the common issues that we see as a GitLab community using us, uh, both OpenEBS and GitLab. Um, so let's actually talk a little bit more about the two use cases, right? So this is what you typically see in DevOps. You have a CI cluster, and then this is also generally called as multi-cloud CI, because you know, your production and pre-prod are in some reliable platforms, or in more secure platforms like you know, your own data center, but your CI is more closer to your developers, and then you know, it's somewhere else, right? So this is your CI cluster, uh, that it's called seed data, right? So the data on which your application starts testing, right? And then you run your pipelines on your seed data. So the challenge here is how do you get your seed data from, you know, from closer to wherever your users are to place where your developers are testing your code through the pipelines, right? 
So I was actually talking to Sid yesterday during dinner, and then he really gave this name. I was telling, you know, the data gets massaged from pre-prod or prod to pre-prod, and then, you know, uh, gets in. He said, no, there is a name for it. It's called pseudonaming, right? The idea of uh, pseudonaming is you take your production data. Of course, you know, like your customers are not going to allow you use it, right? So you just replace that, all the personal data with some, you know, dummy data. So that's a good uh, practice that's followed in a standard way by all DevOps uh, teams. And then they know how to get the pseudo uh, naming. But on Kubernetes, the challenge is how do you really get this data from pre-prod to your GitLab CI cluster, right? So that's, that's one thing. Not only get once, you need to keep getting it again and again. Uh, and then you don't want to be spending any time in getting it. You want to automate it, right? So get that now, get that next week, or probably get it daily if your uh, data is changing so fast, you don't want to be getting it faster. So how you do this is OpenEBS has a feature called uh, Data Migration as a Service, where you take the snapshot of the data and then move it on to your CI cluster. And then you know your pipelines run really on that uh, the data. The second problem is, you know, I as a developer, I merged my data uh, code, and then it really failed. Um, you know, not very common, but it does fail, right? So that's why we do CI. Um, so when I uh, see a failure in the pipeline, I want to get access to the data. So what you do is, if you're using OpenEBS as a storage for your stateful applications in pipeline, uh, you can just call the snapshot API, and it's very easy to call this APIs from your GitLab CI YAML, and then uh, you snap it, you clone it, and then give it to the developer. So, you know, for example, we use this for our own uh, SaaS platform, and then uh, there were instances where you think it's a big problem, but, you know, still it's a null check. Uh, somewhere it's failed, so you, you go ahead and then fix it immediately, and then the code gets merged you know, an hour later, all, uh, all good, right? So that would have saved a few days uh, of uh, setting up manually. And then this is uh, just a map of how uh, our, uh, we have another product called OpenEBS Director. That's a visualization tool for, uh, s you know, what's happening with your OpenEBS or Litmus. Um, so let's say that you got your seed data that is received from your pre-prod, right? And then, you, whenever you get it, you again take a snap of it so that for every pipeline, you can clone the data, right? So as you can see, the vertical lines, these are, uh, for each pipeline that you run, you are really uh, running it out of uh, snapped data, right? So for a successful pipeline, you just clone the snapshot, everything went fine, done, right? What about for a failed pipeline, right? So a failed pipeline, whenever it fails, as you can see here, um, you are snapshotting again, and then you're cloning it, and this is the instance that you give to the developer where there is latest data available that caused it, his, his or her code to fail the pipeline. So then you get, uh, um, that's the debug instance, right? So this is called auto uh, data DevOps, right? So everything is automated right from pre-production all the way to the developer, right? Using snapshot, clone, DMAS, and then GitLab CI. So that's the first uh, topic. And then uh, we also have uh, chaos engineering being used. And then this is more related to the reliability uh, that everyone is talking about. Uh, before we go to how GitLab and Litmus can help you achieve more reliability for your stateful applications, let's talk a little bit about uh, chaos engineering itself. Uh, how many of you practice or heard chaos engineering? Great. Uh, for some reason, I see uh, chaos engineering is more popular in London. And no reason why, but um, a lot of conferences happen here, um, so that's, that's great. So reliability is too important. Uh, what happens if you don't have that reliability? It not, does not cost little money, a lot of money, and mm, if you are very popular, it causes a damage to your reputation as well, right? So the service outage is uh, a problem. I mean, no uh, offense to GitHub uh, here. <laughs> I'm not 
uh, thing uh, intentionally, but you know, uh, uh, this is one. GitHub is the most widely used, you know, developer platform, and then it also went down, right? Um, and similarly, there are other examples like Slack, AWS. So why do this go down, right? So is it that they don't test it well, or they don't know how to do it? They have the best SREs in the world, right? Looking after their website. Um, so uh, why do they go down, right? That's because it's almost impossible to predict what is the kind of a test scenario that your production environment is going to go through. You can never predict because all the time it's keep changing and then you don't have control on uh, some of the things, right? So what do you do? Um, in production, you know, like CI is one step. In production, you go break things on purpose, you observe and fix them, and then you keep continuing them, right? So failure testing versus chaos testing. Failure testing really ends at CI, the pipeline. Then you do the CD, right? So chaos testing extends the failure testing into the production. So you never stop injecting faults. You never stop testing in production, right? And then there is something called chaos engineering loop. Uh, this images are taken from uh, slides uh, presented by Mark McBride. Uh, he's a uh, known authority on uh, chaos engineering. He's the CEO of uh, uh, Turbine Labs. So the way he explains is really important and very nice. So what he says is, um, you know, typically in usual engineering loop, you've got a good uh, stable system, things are running fine, and then something happens. It's called incident. And then your entire incident management kicks in, and you start doing the firefighting, right? So all the way from the SRE to the developers to your CEO, everybody is on the call, right? And then you resolve it. Then what happens? You start observing again. That's what we all know. So in um, chaos engineering loop, you don't wait for the incident to happen. You start actually, you do a planned injection of failure, right? And then you don't firefight, you actually analyze the system you still tune the system, you don't fix because you know, you're know you basically tuning a little bit and start with a small uh, injection of false, false injections and go bigger and bigger as you tune them. So this is more you know, organized chaos type of a thing. Um, and then this is what is chaos engineering uh, loop and this is how you know, the large enterprises or even uh, small with the critical uh, applications that are in production are expected to follow. And then I had also opportunity to speak at the other GitLab uh, the conference in uh, Brooklyn. Um, so I really observed something there, right? It, it really struck me. Uh, so it's not just that I gave in the conferences, I actually get a lot of knowledge, right? So this is uh, Dan Cohn, uh, you know, he's the executive director of CNCF. He was basically talking about why CI is important, right? This was in the keynote of GitLab Summit itself. So, uh, you know, fundamentally what we are saying is as you move to the microservices world, um, you can see that, you know, this is Linux, uh, Kubernetes, Node.js, and then, you know, there are a lot of third-party tools, and finally you have your own piece of code. Your own piece of code itself is not small. Here in this example, it's 40,000 lines of code, right? But compared to your entire stack that can cause your software to fail, your code itself is 1%, right? So, and then Linux is the least dynamic stack. Just imagine how fast Kubernetes is coming. And with microservices world, everybody is releasing almost like every month or sometimes faster than month. So your code is changing so dynamically. And then, you know, you put CA, CD in place. Oh, okay, my CA passed, so let me just put it into the CD. GitLab does a great job of actually, you know, pushing things into production in an automated way. So you think that, you know, everything is good, but you're actually depending on 99% of somebody else's code to make sure that your service is reliable, right? So, uh, so how do you achieve reliability or resilience is the answer is chaos engineering, right? So that's chaos engineering requirement, um, but what is cloud native chaos engineering, right? So it's really about um, introducing random chaos into production. Uh, it's about 
you know, you have to have a good CI, but also you have to have the systems to introduce, analyze, and tune your systems by introducing random chaos. So how do we do that, right? So cloud native, we're all moving to cloud native, right? That is a separate track running somewhere else. I was thinking I was going to speak there, but I'm happy that it's actually more related to DevOps, right? Uh, for development, Kubernetes has created a lot of standard APIs like pod, PVC, service, deployment, stateful set, and also they've introduced uh, custom resource definitions or CRDs, right? How about for chaos testing, right? So thanks to the feature of custom resource definitions, uh, we have a possibility to create CRDs for chaos, right? So these are some of the three CRDs that we have um, defined. I'm going to explain this a little later. Chaos Engine CRD is the one that links your application to the chaos. Chaos Experiment CR is really the experiment, right? And then chaos result is, okay, you ran chaos. It's also very important to observe what has just happened, right? I keep introducing this chaos all the time uh, in random fashion, probably a couple of times in a week, everything went fine, but now it failed, right? And it's important to analyze, you know, what has changed. Out of my 1% code, nothing has changed, maybe a small fix. I'm pretty sure that it didn't break, but there is another, something else has changed in the 99% of the code that I don't own. So it's important to actually analyze what has changed. So CR of a chaos result will help in, you know, uh, putting some code around uh, observation, right? And let's see, uh, in cloud native chaos engineering, how easy it is to deal with your chaos as a developer, right? As a developer, first thing I do is create a pod, and you know it very well. It's all about creating a simple YAML file using you know, the standard Kubernetes way. And to create other objects, uh, Kubernetes objects, you do the same thing. You know, I want to create a persistent volume. It's very simple. And I want to inject chaos now, right? So again, it's the same method. You create. Um, another uh, kind called chaos engine, chaos experiments, and then there you go, it's all done, right? So that's why we call it as it's Kubernetes native way of injecting chaos and observing, right? And it's like kind of built in into your uh, used procedure of how as a Kubernetes developer or an ops person, how you're dealing with your uh, code or operations, you can do the same thing um, the chaos also in the same way. Well, that brings us to, okay, this is a good concept. Is there something available that does that already, right? Yeah, that's Litmus, right? So litmuschaos.io is our website. The main pitch for that is cloud native chaos engineering for Kubernetes developers and SREs. And uh, we have come up with uh, another fantastic concept called Chaos Hub. This is where I actually personally um, like the potential, right? So what happens here is, as developers, you know, we are all uh, dealing with CI admins, pipeline admins, and then you write your test cases, right? And then there is a failure testing, there is a functionality testing. So you need to actually do the failure testing of the 99% of the other code, right? So how do I get the test case? Well, you can get it from Chaos Hub, right? And then you write your application chaos test and push it back to chaos hub. It's just like operator hub type of a thing, right? So this is a place where your chaos test cases or experiments are, you know, shared among ourselves. Most of the code is open, right? The applications. So you're using many of uh, the services which are in open, right? And then you use that. Um, so how are we using chaos engineering and GitLab? Uh, there are two ways, uh, how to do chaos engineering within the pipelines, and the other one is how do we verify, you know, my GitLab on-premise itself is stable or not, right? And uh, th for the first one, chaos engineering pipelines is, um, there must be some experiments already there, use them and then run your test. And uh, we are working with, you know, each community, such as GitLab community, and ask them to contribute chaos experiments back to the hub. So, for example, you know, um, there are no available um, experiments. Uh, we have something for generic chaos. It is recently launched uh, a few weeks ago. So we have a chaos experiments for open EBS application, 
Uh, the hope is, you know, we start working with all communities. For example, GitLab uh, could be the next one. I'm, I'm obviously pitching them. There is a use case for you and your users to have chaos, right? So um, how to use Litmus in GitLab? Um, it's pretty easy. You have the charts. You install it on your pipeline. That installs an operator on libraries. Then pull the charts, and then that gets installed, the CRDs and CRs and then you inject chaos using the YAML files, and then chaos is done, result is ready. It's as simple as that, right? And uh, we went ahead and did one more thing to make it easier for GitLab users. So we, we took these charts and then put them into the GitLab remote templates. So if you are writing a CA YAML file, it's just like, you know, it's, it's a matter of um, uh, taking um, that template and then changing the labels of, you know, what's my application label, and what are the parameters, what's the IP address, whatever the service name, and done. You know, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. And uh, for example, you know, you do the CI ML, and then what happens is you can inject chaos testing. It's, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, well, that brings us to almost the end of it, and we're all about open source, right? Please try them, criticize them, get benefited, Similarly, if you're a GitLab user, of course we are all out, uh, contribute uh, more templates uh, to the Litmus. And then hopefully in your application, you're going to create uh, more chats, uh, chaos charts, and contribute back to the Chaos Hub. Uh, so please do all of, uh, I mean, make use of the three open source projects, GitLab, OpenEBS, and uh, Litmus. Thank you, that brings us to the 20 minutes, hopefully. Um, I am now ready to take some questions, if you permit. Thank you, Uma. Yep. Thank you very much.